Hey everyone, this is Michael again, and welcome to my re review of tonight's edition of Monday Night Raw. And uh, tonight's Raw was held from the Smoothie King Center in New Orleans. And uh, this is the, uh, the Raw after WrestleMania. And uh, if you haven't checked out uh, my WrestleMania 34 review, it was my previous video, I uploaded it earlier today. So if you didn't get to see uh, that review, check it out. I enjoyed WrestleMania. Uh, wasn't the best Mania, but uh, it was enjoyable. I really enjoyed it. But uh, you know, wasn't wasn't you know perfect by any means, though. But but uh, anyways, uh, the Raw after WrestleMania. Uh, gotta say, this show, I enjoyed it. I thought it was a uh, I thought it was a good Raw in my opinion. Uh, just very enjoyable that. You know, kept you watching uh, throughout the night. You know, there were there were no uh, there were no like boring matches. Well, one match that was like meh. So, but we had uh, NXT uh, call ups uh, for uh, the Raw roster, which was uh, really awesome. So, but uh, the show opened up with Stephanie McMahon coming out. You know, she her arm was in a uh, her arm was in like. You know, like a cast. I, you know, I think, I think it was a cast, but it, was, it wasn't. You know, like those strap, those strap cat casts. Uh, but she ends up coming out saying that, you know, to the crowd that the, you know they have no sympathy for her after last night, and she says if she challenged Ronda, you know, at WrestleMania, she would bring out the best in her, and that is exactly what uh, she did. And she brings out Ronda. Ronda ends up coming out. Uh, you know, Stephanie says to Ronda that you know she's the that she's the best one, and that she is a role model to uh, to people. And uh, Stephanie says to Ronda that you know Ronda taught her a lesson last night. And then Stephanie goes on to say, "Oh, Ronda is my new friend," and so. Uh, the crowd ends up booing, you know, the crowd ends up booing Stephanie uh, through the segment. So Rhonda ended up uh, hugging Stephanie, uh, which, uh, was a, uh, which was a trick uh, because she then goes on to break Stephanie's arm again. You know, she, she, uh, she ended up putting uh, Stephanie in the arm bar once again. Stephanie was screaming. Uh, then Stephanie... Uh, you know, was being taken out by the officials uh, out of the ring. And then, you know, the crowd uh, starts booing as, you know, the, Stephanie's walking up the ramp. And then we get JoJo. She gets on the mic and says, oh, ladies and gentlemen, let's have a little respect for Stephanie. And that's when the crowd started booing her, booing uh, Stephanie even more. So, but all in all, it was a, uh, it was a, enjoyable uh, segment you know it was shocking you know seeing Rhonda end up putting uh end up putting uh, Stephanie in the in the arm bar again you know like what we saw from uh last night but uh, it was enjoyable but uh it was an enjoyable segment uh we didn't get Triple H out there uh but uh Next, we had uh, the first match uh, tonight, and it was uh, Nia Jax, Alexa Bliss, and Mickey James. Uh, they were out. Alexa Bliss comes out and says, you know, Nia is a bully and that Nia loves to throw her weight around. She ends up saying that uh, Nia is cold as ice, and, you know, that's why she didn't have a partner tonight. Because I guess this was going to be a uh, this is going to be a, a tag team uh, women's tag team match. So Nia ends up telling Alexa to shut up, and you know she ends up Nia ends up telling Alexa that she enjoyed what she did uh, to her and Mickey last night. And Nia ends up saying that she does have a partner, and it is revealed that Nia's partner is Amber Moon. Uh, Amber Moon got called up from uh, NXT, now on the uh, the Raw roster. 
Uh, it's really, uh, really cool to see Amber Moon there. Uh, I thought Amber was going to go to SmackDown. I thought, uh, you know, the, her NXT call-up would go to SmackDown. But I guess Raw is a perfect fit for her. Uh, probably this means that Asuka is going to stay on SmackDown now. Uh, because we didn't see, uh, we didn't see Asuka, you know, tonight. But, uh, so yeah, so Amber, it's, it, the match was Amber Moon and Nia Jax versus Alexa Bliss and Mickey James. This was a very enjoyable match. Uh, Amber Moon was, uh, was good in the match after coming off her, uh, NXT, her final NXT match at, uh, NXT TakeOver New Orleans against, uh, Shayna Baszler, where, uh, Shayna Baszler defeated her. To win the NXT Women's Championship, but uh, it was it was a good it was a good women's match. It was a good women's tag team match. It was back and forth. Uh, Nia uh, was uh, was awesome in the match. Uh, the crowd started chanting, you know, to Nia, uh, "You deserve it," you know, with the uh, with her being the new Raw Women's Champion. But uh, Amber Moon and Nia Jax uh, got the win. Uh, by uh, Amber Moon hitting her finisher, which is called the Eclipse, on Alexa Bliss. So Amber Moon and Nia Jax win it. Uh, it was a good, enjoyable uh, women's tag team match. Uh, really liked it. Uh, wasn't uh, boring or wasn't boring or anything. Then we had uh, after that match, we had uh, Braun Strowman end up approaching Kurt along with. Uh, you know, his little uh, tag team partner, uh, Nicholas, who was uh, one of the uh, WWE refs' uh, sons. And uh, Kurt ends up congratulating uh, Braun Strowman uh, on the win with him and uh, Nicholas. And Braun says that uh, he and Nicholas are relinquishing the Raw tag team titles. I'm like, oh, this, I'm like, this is good because them winning last night was... It was a stupid match, in my opinion. It was stupid. But uh, Braun and up Braun and uh, Nicholas end up relinquishing the Raw Tag Team Titles because of uh, you know little little Nicholas is still in uh, is still in school. So, <laughs> but uh, you know and uh, you know that's what uh, that's what Braun said. But uh, Braun says as soon as he's done as as soon as Nicholas is done with school, they are both coming back for those Raw Tag Team Titles. <laughs> So, but, uh, you know, it's just that little, uh, backstage segment with, uh, Braun Strowman and Nicholas and Kurt Angle. Then, uh, the next match we had was, uh, No Way Jose, also another, uh, NXT, uh, call-up, uh, on the, uh, the Raw roster now. No Way Jose made his, uh, main roster debut, uh, tonight. Uh, and it was fun. It, it was fun. I, it's been a while since I've seen No Way Jose on uh, WWE TV. You know, he wasn't in NXT for uh, for months, but uh, it was good seeing it was good seeing him uh, tonight on the Raw roster. He defeated a jobber, which of course No Way Jose won it. it wasn't really much of a match because uh, it was it was short, but No Way Jose ended up getting the win. So. It was fun seeing uh, it was fun seeing No Way Jose. Uh, do I think uh, I'm kind of afraid because I think this gimmick might not work uh, on the main roster as you know as you know as it goes on as the years to come when you know No Way Jose is on you know is on the main roster. I just feel I just I'm really afraid that WWE is going to make him a jobber. Uh, that's my own personal opinion. That's why. That's why I think. I mean, look at what happened. Look at what happened with Ty Dillinger. You know, look at what happened with the Ascension when they when uh, those guys were brought up from NXT. Ty Dillinger, certified jobber right now. Ascension, we haven't even seen them uh, in a while. The last time we saw them was Sunday in that uh, Andre Giant Memorial Battle Royal. So they haven't been used uh, aside. Uh, from that, so they they've been jobbers also ever since they were called up from NXT. But I hope that's not the case with No Way Jose. But it's just my thinking of it. What WWE might do. 
But, uh, so yeah, so after that match, Cesaro and Sheamus come to Kurt, and they want their, uh, their Raw Tag Team titles back after Strowman and, uh, Nicholas, uh, relinquished them. Kurt says, you know, he's not just going to give Cesaro and Sheamus back the titles, uh, but he ends up saying that they will get their rematch at the Greatest Royal Rumble, which is happening in, uh, Saudi Arabia in, uh, three weeks. I think it is on the, I know it's on a Friday though, if I can get the calendar here, it's on the 27th, uh, it's going to be on at 12 o'clock uh, Eastern Standard Time on WWE Network, which I'm glad they're, uh, which I'm glad they're uh, broadcasting it live because uh, I was thinking WWE might not broadcast that, uh, but I'm glad they are now. Glad they are. So, so April 27th, the Friday, same day Avengers uh, Infinity War uh, comes out. So that's uh, pretty cool. Both the Greatest Royal Rumble and uh, Avengers Infinity War on the same day. But, uh, so yeah, so back to what I was saying. Uh, Cesaro and Sheamus will get their rematch at the Greatest Royal Rumble in Saudi Arabia against, you know, these three other teams that are competing. Uh, and Kurt calls it uh, Tag Team uh, Eliminator. Uh, so, but it was just that, it was just a uh, little backstage segment with Cesaro and Sheamus and Kurt. Then when uh, Raw came back from uh, commercial, uh, the first match in this uh, Tag Team Eliminator, Eliminator uh, came to uh, came to be. It was the Revival versus Gals and Anderson. Uh, this was an enjoyable match, a uh, very good match. Uh, back and forth between, uh, you know, these guys. This is not the this was not the first time that uh, Revival took on Gals and Anderson. But uh, you know, I was picking uh, who was going to win this match, either Revival or Gals and Anderson. And I like all I like both of these tag teams. I mean, Gals and Anderson. You know, former uh, Raw Tag Team Champions. Really would like to see them uh, win the Tag Team uh, Championships again. But uh, the Revival look like uh, looks like they might have their chance uh, to be Raw Tag Team Champions. I would like to see it. I think uh, it would. I think it would be good uh, if they became it because they deserve it. If they became the uh, the Raw Tag Team t Champions because they deserve it. But uh, they ended up winning the match, uh, the Revival. Uh, they hit the uh, the Shatter Machine on Carl uh, Anderson. So, all in all, it was a good match. It was an enjoyable, uh, it was an enjoyable match. And I really do hope uh, the Revival uh, uh, wins this and faces uh, Cesaro and Sheamus uh, at the Greatest Royal Rumble in Saudi Arabia. Then we had, uh, after that match, we had Seth Rollins coming out, uh, cutting a promo saying, you know, after last night, you know, he is back. He is Seth freaking Rollins. And, you know, he says that, you know, all three guys that were on the shield are Grand Slam champions. And, uh, and that was, and that's pretty cool. I mean, Seth Rollins is now a, uh, a Grand Slam champion after, uh, last night. So Finn Balor ends up coming out. Congrats, uh, Seth Rollins, on the win. Uh, he says he wants to step up and challenge Seth for the title, uh, for the Intercontinental title. The Miz ends up coming out and says, oh, Seth does not deserve that title and that he still deserves it because he, he made the Intercontinental title prestigious. And uh, he says two weeks ago he became a father. And, you know, the crowd starts uh, clapping for him, saying, you know, he's got, he's got kids. He's got kids. <laughs> and uh, Miz says, you know, Seth, <laughs> thinks Seth says, you know, he want, why not have a rematch right here against the Miz tonight? And, because uh, Miz still has his uh, rematch clause uh, for uh, Seth Rollins for the Intercontinental title. So Miz says he will revoke his rematch clause at Backlash. 
So at Backlash, it's going to be Seth Rollins versus The Miz for the Intercontinental title. And that's and Backlash is going to be the first uh, dual brand pay-per-view because they're going to do Raw and SmackDown. Uh, have the same uh, have the same two brands on the pay per view. So, and then uh, surprise, uh, Jeff Hardy ended up returning, and it looked like uh, we were gonna get a match uh, with the uh, Miz and the Miztourage because you had uh, you had Jeff Hardy, uh, Seth Rollins, and Finn Balor there, but uh, the Miz and the Miztourage ended up leaving the ring. But uh, don't be surprised because that's the main event uh, for Raw tonight against them. Then we had uh, Mandy Rose versus Sasha Banks. Uh, match was uh, decent. You had Bailey uh, ended up coming out, was out there. Mandy Rose uh, got the win. So Mandy Rose uh, wins the match. And then uh, we had uh, Paige in the ring, and we had uh, Paige's uh, retirement uh, speech because uh, she said she wanted to uh, retire in New Orleans. So it was a good, it was a good speech from Paige. Uh, really, uh, really enjoyed it. Very, very emotional speech. Absolutely, absolutely, uh, really good speech from Paige. Uh, didn't even know that, you know, Paige was going to have her uh, retirement speech uh, tonight. So, and even the, even the crowd was saying, you know, this is your house. You know, me and the ring is her house. And, you know, I got to say thank you, Paige. Uh, she, she was very entertained. She's one of, she was one of my favorite uh, women's uh, superstars. Uh, so yeah, so that was uh, her uh, retirement speech. It was it was a good speech. Then we had Elias. He was out. He was out there. You know you, the whole shit tick he's do, he does insulting the crowd. Bobby Lashley uh, ret returns to WWE, uh, which was which it was announced uh, a couple of months back that. Lashley was returning to WWE, and I'm glad he's back. I've been waiting for Lashley to come back to WWE for a long time. And uh, he hasn't been in WWE, I think, since 2009. I may be wrong on that. But I remember uh, but I remember uh, last time we saw Bobby Lashley was in, that, uh, was in uh, WWE's uh, version of ECW. Uh, because uh, I remember he was the... Uh, the ECW champion uh, at that time in like 2007, but uh, yeah, yeah, he left WWE in uh, yeah, I was I was wrong. He didn't he didn't he didn't leave WWE in 2009. He actually uh, was released in 2008, of uh, February of 2008. So uh, just had to look that up though. But yeah, it's been it's been. Wow, it's been 10 years since he was last in WWE. It's crazy. But uh, Bobby Lashley ends up coming out, and he takes out Elias, hits a neck, hits a neck breaker on Elias, and then uh, he also lays him out with a uh, with another one of, with another move. I forgot the name of the move though. But he ended up laying out Elias there, and that pretty much ended the other segment. But uh, it was really shocking. It was really shocking to see uh, Bobby Lashley. Uh, you know, come back. You know, like I said, I've been waiting a while for him to come back to WWE. You know, he finally he finally comes back home. But yeah, it was, it was really cool. Then after that, uh, we saw Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn. They uh, came to Raw. They visited Kurt. They visited Kurt Angle, and you know, basically they want. Both of them wanted a job on Raw, you know, since they can't, you know, go back to SmackDown since they lost to Daniel Bryan and Shane uh, and Shane McMahon last night. So, Kurt ends up saying, you know, that, you know, they're both looking for a job and that he tells them that the tag team is full already. 
And he, what was really funny was uh, Kurt ended up uh, taking a shot at TNA, which which was really funny, which was very, very funny. And uh, Kurt says they have a spot uh, tonight for one of them. Then Kurt ends up saying either take it or leave it. And so that pretty much leads to Kevin Owens versus Sami Zayn tonight. Only one of them could be on Raw. So Then we had uh, Heat Slater and Rhino. Uh, they were out. And Heat Slater says, you know, if there's anybody in the back to come on down and face the both of them, you know, come down and face them. Then uh, another NXT uh, call up. The Authors of Pain, uh, which I knew that they were going to debut uh, tonight. Uh, they had uh, Paul Ellering there. And uh, all this a pain. These, this tag team, uh, they were the they were dominant in NXT. They were the former NXT tag team champions. Uh, one of one of my favorite uh, tag teams. They're just really uh, they're just really good. They're a really good tag team. So it was Authors of Pain versus Heat Slater and Rhino. Uh, good match for uh, Authors of Pain. They just uh, dominated the hell out of the match and took out uh, Heat Slater and Rhino. Authors of Pain got the win with the uh, with the last chapter, which is their finisher on uh, Heat Slater uh, to score the win. So uh, Authors of Pain win the match. And it, from what, what it looked like... I think maybe they fired uh, Paul Ellering because my friend said uh, that. Because uh, I didn't, I didn't spot it though. But you know, all in all, it was a uh, it was a decent match for Authors of Pain. Uh, I have to say, you know, since they made their uh, their Raw debut tonight, uh, next week. Uh, forgot to mention, next week is the uh, the Superstar Shakeup. They're doing another draft, which I was right because I called it. I said after WrestleMania, there's gonna be there's possibly gonna be a draft or Superstar Superstar Shakeup, and I was right. So, but yeah, if all does a pain stay on Raw, without a doubt, I would like to see them face the Revival. Uh, in the future for the Raw Tech Team, uh, for the Raw Tech Team Championships, if the Revival uh, wins the uh, the Raw Tech Team Championships at the Greatest Royal Rumble, that is one that is one uh, match I would like to see. So then after that match, uh, Roman Reigns ends up coming out. You know, he said to a crowd to a crowd full of boos. Uh, they were booing him, and he comes out and says. He got his ass kicked last night. With what? Well, no, but no duh, you know. He did get his ass kicked last night by Lesnar. But he goes, I'm here tonight. And Brock Lesnar isn't. He ends up saying Vince couldn't look him in the eye and smarten him up, you know, last night. And he says Lesnar is one hell of a businessman. And uh, he says Lesnar did sign... Lesnar, he says, Lesnar signed with WWE again. Yes, uh, Brock Lesnar did re-sign with WWE. And Ro Roman ends up saying they ended up putting him in a steel cage. In a steel cage match. I think that's going to be happening at the Greatest Royal Rumble. Uh, he says he will face Lesnar until he gets the Universal title. So Roman Reigns still wants that, that Universal uh, Championship. And uh, Samoa Joe makes his return, uh, which uh, is really awesome. You know, we haven't seen Joe since uh, September. And uh, Joe ends up returning and he says, you know, Roman thinks, you know, there's a conspiracy. And that last night Lesnar exposed him. Lesnar exposed uh, Roman. And he failed to make, you know, and he failed. You know, Roman ended up failing. And, you know, Joe says, oh, every time Lesnar takes on Roman, Roman always gets jacked up. So, it was a pretty, uh, it was a pretty uh, cool uh, segment. You know, Samoa Joe uh, returns. Glad that he's back. So, 
Then uh, after that uh, segment, we had uh, Bray Wyatt and Matt Hardy versus Titus Worldwide, uh, Apollo Crew, Apollo and uh, Titus O'Neil. Uh, this was another tag team match in the tag team uh, in the tag team eliminator. And this was a uh, this was a good match. I really liked uh, the the tag team and against Bray Wyatt and Matt Hardy. I thought they made a uh, a good tag team. Uh, they just ended up, you know, taking out uh, Titus O'Neil and Apollo. Sorry about that, but I was saying uh, Bray Wyatt and Matt Hardy uh, ended up taking out uh, Titus O'Neil and Apollo. But uh, Bray Wyatt and Matt Hardy got the win. Uh, Matt Hardy ended up pinning the twist of fate on, I think it was Apollo, uh, to score the win. So, Bray Wyatt and Matt Hardy are moving on. Next week, they get to team up uh, and face the Revival. So, that's going to be, uh, that's going to be a good match to see. And, uh, also next week, uh, we're going to be getting, uh, Sasha Banks and Bayley once again. So, but, uh. So yeah, all in all, Bray Wyatt and Matt Hardy versus Titus Worldwide. It was a uh, it was a decent match. Then we had uh, Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn. Uh, they both went at it. Uh, this was a good match. It was very enjoyable. Uh, you know, you know when uh, back then when Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn went at it, you knew it was going to be a good match. Uh, both of them, uh, every time they went at it, it was a very good match. It was. Always, it was always a good match between uh, the both of them. But uh, the match itself ended in a no contest uh, because both of them uh, were uh, were counted out. They didn't make the uh, they didn't make it to their feet uh, by the ten count. So the match ended in a no contest, and they both uh, are not going to be on Raw as a. Uh, one of them wasn't going to be on Raw for you know to be a permanent uh, Raw superstar, but I bet you know since they're uh, since they can't be on SmackDown, probably they're going to be on SmackDown. They're probably going to beg Daniel Bryan and Shane McMahon for uh, their jobs back. Uh, who knows? But I can sense it going in that way. But uh, so yeah, so the match itself it was it was. Pretty enjoyable up until the end, though. Then we had Jeff Hardy backstage. He was with his brother Matt, and uh, Bray Wyatt also comes. Uh, Matt ends up calling uh, Jeff Hardy, you know, the brother Nero, you know. And uh, it, it was really, it was really cool seeing all three of them. You know, Matt, Matt and Jeff Hardy and Bray Wyatt. Uh, they should make a, uh, they should make a staple. Uh, with all three of them, and call it the uh, the Woken uh, family, just you know, like how you had the Wyatt family, just call it the uh, the Woken family, or you know, some something else, something that would be you know a much better name. Which I hope WWE, uh, I hope WWE puts uh, those three guys together and form like a staple, because that that would be uh, that would be pretty cool, and. You know, Matt Hardy says, oh, it's wonderful, you know, that, you know, that Jeff Hardy is there. And then we see Finn Balor and Seth Rollins there. And they were like, what was that? It was funny, though. It was a cool, little, it was a cool backstage segment with them. Then we get to the main event, uh, which was Finn Balor, Jeff Hardy and Seth Rollins versus The Miz and Miz Taraj. Uh, this was a uh, this was a decent main event. Uh, I thought it was very enjoyable. Uh, Ballard, uh, Hardy, and Seth Rollins uh, were awesome in the match. Uh, it was back and forth between them, between uh, them and uh, Miz and Miz Taraj. Uh, basically, uh, the match started and they they were just taking out Curtis Axel and Bo Dallas. But uh, Finn Balor, Jeff Hardy, and Seth Rollins got the win. Uh, Seth ended up hitting the uh, the stomp on uh, Miz uh, to score the win. Then you had after the match, uh, they all three of them just take out uh, just take out uh, Bo Dallas, and uh, you know they end up hitting the uh, 
Finn hits, I think, the coup de grace. Jeff hits the uh, the twist of fate and a swanton bomb. And then Seth Rollins hits the stomp. Curse also, uh, Curse Axel also then gets it from all three guys. Uh, they all lay out Curse Axel with the same uh, with the same thing. Uh, Jeff Hardy ends up hitting the swanton on Curtis. Uh, Seth Rollins ends up hitting the, uh, the stomp on uh, Curse Axel. And that pretty much uh, ended uh, Raw tonight. So it was it was a decent main event. It was it was enjoyable. Uh, nothing I nothing I could complain about about uh, tonight's Raw except for maybe like uh, except for maybe like No Way Jose versus the Jobber, which uh, that that was really nothing. That was meh, though. But uh, so yeah. So anyways. That's it for my review of tonight's edition of Monday Night Raw, uh, the Raw after WrestleMania. And uh, like I said next week there's going to be a, uh, a superstar shakeup, uh, which I think it deserve it really deserved it. It really deserves it. You know, just shaking up the whole uh, the whole uh, roster. Uh, hope they uh, hope they choose uh, good ones for you know. To go to uh, Raw and you know superstars from SmackDown, they go to Raw, and the Raw superstars they go to SmackDown. I hope they choose uh, wisely. I hope they have some uh, some good picks of superstars to go to uh, both of the brands, and also NXT uh, call-ups. Though uh, I hope there's more NXT call-ups uh, during the other uh, superstar shakeup. Uh, I know I want to I want to see. Uh, there's rumors about it saying that uh, Peyton Royce and Billy Kay are being bought up. I would love, I would love if they were to be on SmackDown uh, because SmackDown, SmackDown needs uh, more, uh, uh, more women on for their women's division. Uh, Raw has you know a lot of women on their on their division, but I, I'm a fan of uh, I'm a fan of both Peyton Royce and Billy Kay. I really would like to see them on SmackDown uh, because you know they were at pay per views. They were they were with Daniel Bryan and you know just pestering pestering him. Uh, it was funny though. I remember. But yeah, I hope they go to SmackDown. So yeah. So anyways, that's it for this review of uh, the Raw after WrestleMania. Uh, thank you all for watching, and be sure to give this video a thumbs up, comment, subscribe. And to stay tuned tomorrow night for my SmackDown review. And, of course, it's going to be the SmackDown after WrestleMania. Hope, you know, they, they could top, you know, Raw. You know, it would be as good as Raw tonight. So, until uh, that video tomorrow, I'll see you all here tomorrow with that review.